Hello, YouTubers. Today, I, I'm bringing a guest to my YouTube videos. I'm bringing my dear friend here, Josh McCall, and we're going to uh, demonstrate a, a functionality, a new functionality that's coming in with Visual Studio 2019. It's called live sharing. So if you're familiar with pair programming mechanism where two, two developers are sitting on the same machine and trying to work you know, on a problem, which is my, personally my favorite development uh, technique or one of my favorite. Uh, this makes it a lot easier, um, especially if you're the person that you want to work with is 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 overseas or uh, living in another city, but you still want to cooperate with them and and uh, build a cool, exciting projects, and you need that feedback. So, Josh, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, this is Josh. Hey, Josh. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, with the new Visual. Did you love the splash screen? It's pretty cool. Josh can't see my desktop, but once I share my link with him, he's going to be able to see my desktop. So we're just going to work on a very small demo project. I'm going to start with a class library in here, and then we're going to move forward with, let's, uh, let me select here a class library real quick. Class, class library. I'm going to do it in uh, .NET Framework. And then we're going to call it demo pair programming. And the solution name is just going to be demo. So I get to distinguish if a project is demo to pair programming, but the solution is just demo. I'm going to create a new project. Still, Josh can't see anything. But once I share that project with Josh, he gets to see what's going on. So if you look here, if you look at the top, top part here, uh, you'll see live share. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. OK, it's going to give me a link. And then I'm just going to share that link with Josh. And as soon as Josh gets that link, all he has to do is uh, so here's copy, copy link. And then I'm going to, se going to send that to Josh in a message. Josh, did you get my message? Got the message. Let me pull it up. All right, perfect. This is exciting. I like this a lot. Got it. So as you can see here, OK, reject. OK, now Josh should be able to see my my world. Can you see my, my solution? Yep, it just popped up. Nice. Josh, see, as you can see here, it, it's showing you like the part where the person you're, you're collaborating with is, is typing as they go. It looks a lot like uh, if you're sharing a document on Microsoft Office or, or Google Docs. Anyway, let's go ahead here and do a, a pair programming session. One of my favorite techniques is the ping pong technique. So when someone writes a test and the other person writes the, 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 uh, the implementation to make that test pass, and then the other way. So we're going to start with something super simple because the program itself is not the idea here. It's just a technique, rather. So I'm going to build a class here called uh, FizzBuzz. Is that right, Josh, Fizz, FizzBuzz? Yep. Or is, is, or, or is it Buzz? OK. So FizzBuzz, and then uh, we're going uh, we to write a little method here that returns a string. Uh, we're going to pass it a number. And then we're going to throw a not implemented exception, right? So this is just a, a very basic thing. Let me change the class name here to fizzbuzz. All right. Now let's add in a test project. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add in a test project. It was interesting when you renamed it, the, the screen flashed a little bit, but then it renamed the file and it came right back up. So that's cool to see how fast it is. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I like that. So let's do this. Let's say this is going to be demo pair programming test, right? So I add that in here. Oh, it's throwing an error on not implementing exception. Let's see what's that all about. We probably need to pull in some... Uh, some libraries or something. OK, so let's go here and let's see what the deal is. Oh, it's, it should be new. Throw new. It's my bad. 
not implemented exception. Great. So in the unit test, we're just going to test fizzbuzz. So it's going to be fizzbuzz test. There you go. Perfect, perfect. And we're going to add that uh, project to, to the test. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go to projects, demo pair programming. I added that. Great. Now I need my class. So in my test here, here's the expectation. The first thing here is should return fizz. So if it's a, if it's an odd number, it should return fizz. Uh, fizz. So uh, integer expected uh, result, and the expected result should be fizz. Expected result fizz, and integer um, uh, input. And let's have the input to be one. So if it's odd, it should return fizz, right? And then we're going to in instantiate our class here. So we're going to say fizzbuzz. Of course, it's not going to find it. We're going to click control period here and then initialize the class. And then we're going to say fizzbuzz dot fizz or buzz. And then we pass in the input. And in here, I'm going to type in the actual result. And then at the end here, I'm going to say assert our equal expected result versus actual result. Results are different. Now, if I run my test, control RT, this should blow up because there is no implementation there. And this is when Josh is going to come in. This is the ping pong part. This is I already wrote an expectation. This is where Josh is going to come in and actually write an implementation for that. So what do I, what do I got here? Uh, we need to build the whole thing first. So let's see. Uh, right click, rebuild solution. I have a little problem here with, oh, oh, OK. So Josh, you wanna you wanna hold on on the implementation while we were doing this. Josh was 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 building the the implementation. Let's comment this. Let's have it throw an exception first, and then go to uh, the implementation right after that. So let's go. Yeah, not implement exception. Perfect. I was wondering if you if you do trigger build if it would um, save it on my end and stuff. I know in in VS Code um, it was. One one person could could only uh, trigger the build on one side or the other, but it looks like when you triggered build, it actually is saving it on my side and running the build process on my computer. Or at least it looks like it's building on on my side too. So um, that's that's pretty cool that so, we can yeah. we can trigger the build on both sides. So it's like it's like one one machine like running on one like in real life. Okay, let's run that. Let's see what happened. This should blow it. Should throw a not implemented exception, something crazy like that. Let me close this at the top. Come on. It's running. Doing some magic. Do you see it running on your end too, or just the or just the code? Stinks. Yeah, this, this is awesome. It just went into like the debug debug mode, and it uh, has a breakpoint right there and stuff. So it just threw the exception. Um, nice. Yeah, so it looks it looks like it's, if I were just to run the test, this is awesome. Okay, so now you just want to write in enough implementation to make that one test pass. So yeah, sure. So now Josh is going to go in and do his part to make that test go green. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so we wanted to. So I guess the first part of it is actually we're going to um, make it just return is bypassing in one, right? So it looks yeah. like my logic is actually backwards here. So uh, that's what I get for fast. Um, and we will just cut that part out, and then we'll save it. And then uh, can I right-click and click run? Well, run test. Nice. Okay, look at that. Nice. Nice. So what Josh is doing here, he's just returning fizz anyway, because there is no way in my test whatsoever to, to say, oh, I'm going to throw in multiple numbers. I'm going to throw in random numbers. We'll see how that goes. So you're running your tests? Yeah, I tried to run it. Did it run? 
It looked like it built, but I don't see it actually running. So, so okay, so let me go on, on the test itself and do control RT from my end here. That's pretty good, Josh. And that would be also beneficial. There are the tests. So the test passed, right? The test passed because I didn't say anything about whatever number is should be passed. I'm just saying it should be fizzed, right? But now I'm going to go ahead and write another test, control D. And this test will say should return buzz. And this time, this test is going to have a an even number. And I'm going to run my test. And our hypothesis here is that this test should fail. Actually, my test is not right. It should actually return buzz if it's even, right? So we're going to make here, when we're going to make it say buzz in here and then do control RT. Let's do it. This should go red. Boom. So expected buzz, actual fizz, and the test failed, right? All right, Josh, make it pass. Sounds good. Me... So when you were running the test, it looks like it, so here. Let me see if I can uh, go ahead and run, trigger it again from here. So yeah, if you do Control R to it should just run things out for you, or you could go to tests at the top and then run all tests. Yep, and I basically I right clicked in the test and then and did run tests. So it, yeah, multiple ways to get there. So it did it trigger it on on the uh, run on yours. No, nope. maybe you'll have to run the test. So I went ahead and saved the logic so you can hit, hit run and and uh, hopefully it, it will pass. All right. So you have number. We have an error here. It says cannot implicitly convert this to pool. Uh, no. I would, I think it's like a, uh, what was it? Uh, is it something like this? Or was it like something like this? Maybe. I don't know. So if it's fizz, if it's even, it return fizz. If it's, uh, oh, well, we still want to return. We want to return. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's try to run those tests. If I do control or just just run them all from here, let's see if that works. You know, it's silly. I think it's actually probably good that I made that, that typo because that's that's some of those things that you catch when you are ping-bonging back and forth in pair yeah. and stuff. Because otherwise yeah. I would have stared at that for a couple of minutes and wondered what was going on. But um, somebody else can just point it out and say, hey, dummy, you, you typed it wrong. <laughs> right. So, so th there it is. So this is basically it. You know, if it's even, it'll return this. If it's odd, it'll return this. Something I really highly recommend, though, uh, in the ideal world, just to save time on that video, uh, because we're way past 10 minutes here. Um, uh, in the ideal world, you shouldn't actually be testing against real solid values like this. I would write a method down here, and this method will generate random odds and random evens, because it's so easy to go on FizzBuzz in here and say, if the value is 1, return this, and if the value is 2, return this, you know. So instead, you need to be testing the behavior rather than solid data. That's pretty much it. I exceeded my 10 minutes. And uh, thank you, Josh, for joining. And uh, I'll see you in another video.